Blog Talk Radio. Man, I know I'm not the only one that go through this, man. I see you, Pharaoh Nevin. I know the whole nation going through this. T-G-O-T-double-C. Matter of fact, the whole world. <laughs> Even the Gentiles. Shalom. Seems like every time you try to do right, Brother Jason, closer you get to the most high, Shalom. That evil one on your back, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Down your Allah, Shalom. Jack Cartel, we're going to see Zion, baby. Crazy, man. First, what you got to say about this, man? Bless you, brothers and sisters. Uh, this is Brother Rikashiar from the Gathering of Christ Church. Uh, I'm here in Arizona doing the show live, and I thank the Most High for allowing us to have another another great day. I'm outside, a clear night. Sun just went down, and uh, I wanted to hear the whole song tonight because the Most High is gathering Israel. And uh, part of the song... Uh, links right to our topic this evening, which is the African deception. And in the song, it, it's um, it's sung. The Arabs and African told us at gunpoint. They gathered our wives and children and sold us. And I say the we call it the African deception because right now. One of the biggest deceptions in America right now is teaching that the Negroes are, in fact, Ham, suffering the curse of Ham, when, in fact, the Negroes 
along with the Jamaicans and the Haitians, are actually from the children of Israel. And by teaching that we're Africans or we originated from Africa, that, that, that teaching alone not only places us in a whole different family, it's part of the captivity doctrine that's taught in the Roman Catholic Church. In the Roman Catholic Church, they teach that they were right by enslaving us because we have the curse of Canaan that came on Ham. And then they'll let us go into Egyptology and study that, and you notice they promote that. They'll even go through through great lengths to push the fact that the first original man came out of Africa so they can give us some sense of pride and have us focus on Africa instead of Israel, our homeland. So I'm going to first, I'm going to open this up, but I'm, I want to um, make sure we put the, the guest call number out there early because I know a lot of people, the lines are blinking already. And I'm going to go into a little history and the Bible to show you that just because people are in a land doesn't make them the uh, what you would call the aborigines or the original people in that particular land. Like, for instance, America is a great melting pot made out of all nations. But the people in this land that's living in this land today can't say that they are the original Americans, so to speak. Just because you moved into a land don't make you the people of the land. And I'm saying that based on the topic African deception tonight. Just because we were in Africa doesn't make us Africans. Like, for instance, if I were to take a plane to Puerto Rico, that wouldn't make me a Puerto Rican. Even if I had go to Puerto Rico and have a family and stay there 100 years, that still don't make me the people of Puerto Rico. Okay? You're going to find that's how we got into Africa. And that's the biggest deception, that the whole earth, all the nations, all the superpowers of the earth have been promoting us being Africans so that we could focus on uh, Hamitic people opposed to being the children of Israel uh, written of in the Bible. That was the biggest deception. But let me put the guest call number out there this evening. I'm outside. I'm actually doing a show under, under the skies right now, so I hope you all hear me clearly this evening. Um, let's start off with, with uh, giving out the number, okay? The guest call-in number is 347-308-8224. That's 347-308-8224. Now, they teach us that because we came over here on cargo slave ships, that automatically make us Africans and that we're, surf we're suffering the curse of Ham. Now, we would accept that if they would apply the same understanding or give, it, give at least an equal bill to the Jews that went into captivity in Deuteronomy 28. Why in church they teach the curse of Ham being a servant of servants? Yet, you'll never hear in any Christian church uh, the teaching of Israel breaking God's law, going into cargo slave ships. I wonder why. They promote the captivity of Ham and his son Canaan. So let's first, I hope you can follow me in the scriptures here. And we're going to first point out the African deception. Okay? You can follow us in the scriptures. I'm going into Genesis. Okay? And I'm going directly to the curse on Ham. Okay? And you can follow me in the scriptures here. I'm in Genesis. I'm in Genesis, uh, the ninth chapter. Okay? And excuse some of the background this evening. Uh, again, I'm outside, but I hope you hear me clearly. When you go to Genesis 9, this is when Noah came off the boat with his sons and their wives, okay? Now, this is after the flood. Only eight people lived through the flood. Noah, his three sons, and their wives. 
Now, mind you, Ham, Shem, and Japheth came out of Noah. Okay? Now, I'm going to start at the 17th verse. It says, and, and the Most High said, Noah, this is a token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. Now, what this shows is all life came off of the ark, okay? So all that stuff they're teaching that all life came out of Africa originally, even though we know uh, Adam was planted in the land we call Israel today, when you look at the four rivers that can pass, they can pass the land of Africa, but Israel is right next to Africa. That was still the holy land. But really, the people on this side of the flood came off of the ark. So that's where all life really came off of. The ark land on Mount Ararat, Turkey, okay? And their three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, Shem is the father of the Israelites and the Middle Eastern. Ham is the father of the Africans, okay, which are the Hamitic Africans. And Japheth is primarily the Asians and Persians, Okay? Now, when you read the 19th verse, it says, These are the sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. So all the, all the people came out of Ham, Shem, and Japheth. And Noah began to be an husbandman and planted a vineyard and drank of the wine and was drunken and was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, his father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it upon both their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. So when you go into the history on this, Ham was really making fun of his father because his father fell drunk and was naked. And the, brother had, the brothers had respect of their father, knowing that it was against the law to look on your father's nakedness. When you read the 24th verse, it says, And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Curse be Canaan. A servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem. And Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth and shall dwell in the tents of Shem. And Canaan shall be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years. And all the days of Noah were 950 years. And he died. Now, the key part of this is the scripture says that Canaan shall be a servant to his brethren. We know that out of all the families of Ham, there's one family that never received rulership or power in the earth, and that's the South Africans. All the other, the Ethiopians, the Egyptians, even the, uh, even the, the North Africans had some power in rulership in the earth. The only family that never had rulership and power in dominion is the Canaanites, which are the South Africans. Now, here's the deception. They teach in church that this curse, that this is what they taught in captivity, that this curse is a curse on the Negroes, and that gave the Caucasians the, the right to enslave the people of Israel, I mean, uh, the people of Canaan. So by pulling this scripture in captivity, and this is what they teach, and not only back in slavery, they teach this in modern-day theology. Now, here's the backwards uh, understanding. That's how you know that there's quite great deception in the Christian church. They'll teach this in, like with no problem at all, identifying us as slaves of the Canaan. But we'll never pull out the people that went in cargo slave ships in Deuteronomy 28. Or they'll say we're wrong for identifying the fact that we're the children of Israel, but yet they'll identify us as Canaan in Genesis, the ninth chapter, and say that, you know, our slavery is warranted because we were born to be slaves, okay? This is part of Christian doctrine. They teach this in all the theologian seminary colleges. If you are a preacher or if you ever went to a seminary college, you'll know that they teach this doctrine, and they push us under Canaan. Now, first of all, I'm going to read out of, out of the Bible dictionary, okay? I'm going to read Ham out of the Bible dictionary here. One moment. Let me get this here.
Okay. All right, I have it here. I'm going to tell you the exact page I'm on here. I'm on page 213 from the Bible Dictionary. It says, Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races, but not the Negroes. Let me repeat that. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. So actually, Zonophan know that the Negroes are not from Ham. Let's see the four families it explained that comes from Ham. But the Egyptians, Africans, Ethiopians, Africans, Libyans, Africans, and Canaanites, Africans. And Canaanites, Canaan was the son of the curse. And even Zondaphan admits that the Negroes did not come from any of these four families. Okay? So if they know that the Negroes did not come from any of these four families, they must also know the true origin of the Negroes. And why would they go through such deception or, or, or such heights in their theologian seminary colleges to keep this fact? from the children of Israel. They don't mind you going into Egyptology and saying Kemet and I was an Egyptian, and they don't mind you going into any Africanism. But yet, uh, people are up in arms when the Negroes claim that they're the true Jews based on Deuteronomy 28 chapter. Now, if if there's equity here, the same way they can go into the Bible and try to say we're servants according to Canaan, why can't we go into Deuteronomy 28 chapter and say that we're the servants that came over here in ships suffering the curse of the children of Israel? It's the same Bible. Now, number one, let's make this clear. Just because you're dark-skinned doesn't make you, make you African, okay? Before there was any uh, Edomites or Esau in Genesis 25, before there was any curses of leprosy in the earth, all nations were dark-skinned, okay? So Ham, Shem, and Japheth were dark. Even the original Asians, which were the Mongols, those that, uh, the, the, the original people next to the mountains out, off of Russia, they are dark Asian people that came through the Barren Strait that's in Alaska now. They're from the seat of Japheth. They're very dark-skinned. They're not from Ham. You have dark-skinned Arabs. So just because one is dark does not make them African, okay? Now, we know that Israel uh, goes from a light sandy brown to a deep down dark chocolate brown. There's really uh, uh, no one hue of the children of Israel. They're like speckled birds. They have real light skin. They're real dark skin, Okay? But let's, let's not get off the beaten path. This is talking about the African deception and on why the nations promote Africanism and push Africanism on us and why our people ignorantly eat it up and teach the same doctrine all over the earth. They eat it up like it's, like it's candy, not knowing that it's part of our deception. It's part of the destruction. Okay? Now, let me go over a few other things here. Okay? I'll give you an example. Moses, which we know was an Israelite. Okay? But yet, he was the prince of Egypt. So in order for Moses to operate within Egypt as a prince, he must have been dark just like the Egyptians. All right? And we go over these scriptures all the time, but I'm just trying to show you that as Israelites or people of the curse, it's important that we first we must first be able to distinguish ourselves 
from the African tribes because that's part of the deception. And I understand brothers and sisters have been deprived so long of their heritage that they'll hold to any rich culture. I mean, we don't, you know, we understand that. We, we don't deny that. We understand that if you're told you're slaves and you find out that the Egyptians did so many great things in this earth and they were black and, okay, I'm black, well, since I don't know who I am, let me cling to that ideology. Not knowing that during the Hyksos period, it was the Israelites that were living in Egypt that brought all the great science and understanding of mathematics to the Hamitic people. So still, you're still caught up in the same deception and being led by, by the Gentile teaching, just a different Gentile. Okay? So a lot of people say, well, I'm going to get away from the white man's teaching, but you fall under someone else's teaching. Egyptology is more so pushed by Manithos, which was a Hamitic Egyptian philosopher. And he had the same agenda that the Europeans had to try to stop Israel from ever standing or, or, or ever being a nation again. So Manithos was an African philosopher who hated Israel. So it was his job to skew history also and push Egyptology opposed to the people and the God that took down Egypt. Now, let's go into Moses real quick. Let's go into Moses. And then I'm going to show, because some people might, might wonder or might ask, why is this so important? But we're going to hit that too. Here's Moses in Exodus, the fourth chapter, when the Most High revealed himself to Moses and was showing him signs to let him know that the God of Israel was with him and that he, were, he was to show signs and wonders and deliver the children of Israel out of captivity. In Exodus, the fourth chapter, it reads, Let me start at the first verse. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto me, unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is in thy hand? And he said, Arise. And he said, Cast it onto the ground. And he cast it onto the ground, it became a serpent, and Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, have appeared unto thee. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. Now that proves right there, Moses must have been a black man. How could this be a miracle if he put his hand into his into his bosom and pluck it out, how can this be a miracle if he's a white man? The seventh verse reads, and he said, put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. So there's not too many colors on the earth. If the miracle was his hand turning white, and then he plucked it, put it back in his vesture or his bosom and pluck it back out and it becomes dark or like his other flesh, that's clear that he must have been a man of color. That's clear. Also, Moses hid amongst the Africans so he could save his nation. Christ, when Christ was born, the Most High told Joseph to take your son and flee into Egypt so he can hide amongst the other dark people, even though Christ was from an entirely different family. Same thing that happened in Luke, when the Lord told us, when we see this desolation of abomination, flee into the wilderness. So the Africans, in fact, fled, I mean, the Israelites fled into Africa over the Atlas Mountains, hiding amongst the other dark races. But yet, this teaching is not taught anywhere in this earth today. So, why can't they teach this rich history? Let 
we're going to attempt to go through a few things and, and, and go through some scriptures and show you exactly why they'll, they'll prefer you call, call yourself an African opposed to an Israelite. But before we do that, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to bring some people on after the break, and then we're going to get the, the full detailed scripture breakdown on the African deception. We're going to take probably about a 30-second to a minute break, and after that, we're going to go all the way into it and start calling you in and bring out more scripture. Okay, um, we're back here. So, excuse me, let's take a little break. I'm going to pull a few people in because I promise I would. And then we're going to get right back to it. The African deception. Why is it that the Negro holds? All right. I need someone that's following Egyptology to tell us beyond any shadow of a doubt which of the four families of Ham they derive from. Prove they come from Egyptians. Prove they're Ethiopians. Prove they're Canaanites, which are South African, or prove they're North Africans, or for what? The majority. Okay. Excuse me, brothers and sisters. Uh, the signal is pretty light where I am right now, so I totally apologize for the bad connection. Again, the show is called The African Deception. And uh, let, me, let me start by uh, pulling a few of you brothers, brothers and sisters back in. Excuse me, I'm fumbling getting everything together here because I got my paperwork to my Bible here, and I lost the signal. I totally apologize. But let me start pulling you in here. And Cody, brother, I didn't forget you tonight, so I'll make sure I pull you in tonight also if I see you. We have someone from the 513 area code. Let's see here. Okay, this is Ricard Shaw from the Gavin of Christ. How are you doing this evening? Hello? One moment here. This is Ricard Shaw from the Gathering of Christ Church. Are you with me this evening? Hello? I'm sorry if I'm having a little difficulty here this evening. Let me try this again one moment.
Hello, this is Ricard Shaw from the Gathering of Christ. Can you hear me? Okay, we're going to try a different number here. Stick with me, folks. I'm having a little technical problem here. I'm going to try one more. Uh, this is Ricard Shaw from the Gathering of Christ. How are you doing this evening? Shalom, brother. Shalom. Your name? This is Sister Carla, calling from California, Temecula. Okay, you must you you must dial in a half hour before the show, huh? <laughs> yep, I look forward to it every Sunday, being blessed by the Most High with it. Okay, what do you think uh, about the topic we're discussing now, the biggest deception in earth, teaching the Negroes well, that they are, in fact, Africans? Well, first of all, brother, I'll pray to Ahaya Bahashim Yeshaya for you all. I think about it being a glorious time, okay? This is a, a very astounding moment for me in my life since February and for my children and for my husband. And I think it's the, the thing that came forth into this truth is just bursting forward. However, some of us who are lost in the earth today not knowing who we are, I being one of those sisters who are, as you described, the Sandy Brown, Okay. Okay. And, for long, and for the longest time, I look at myself in the mirror from where I want to know where I come from. And it took a lot of me being able to connect constantly with the Holy Spirit and allowing him just to be him uh, to, I'm sorry, I'm going to rephrase that, her, because I just saw you <laughs> show and clip the other day on Justin TV that the Holy Spirit is a she, the feminine spirit. Absolutely. Um, so I correct that. So with that saying, I am able to identify who I am, a Hebrew Israelite, a sister um, of the Most High, a, ch- a daughter of Zion, and I'm so excited about that. So I, I technically am constantly praying for my sisters and brothers out there so they can come to the truth. But as for me in my house, I'm, I'm ecstatic every day. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a new day. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm I'm excited, but the reason I was pointing this out is the fact that let, let me read a scripture that's that, that that's that I that I know that's very important. It says in okay. Genesis the forty. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can. Yeah, it says in Genesis forty nine. It says <clears throat> forty nine and eight that Judah, thou art he whom thy brother shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. So it's letting you know that Judah is the leader, and they will be closest to the uh, the rulers or the governments that are oppressed in Israel. And when you read the 10th verse, it says, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes. We know Shiloh is the peaceable one or Christ. That's right. And to him shall the gathering of the people be, right? Amen. Yes, brother. Now, the key part about this, it tell you in the ninth verse that Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey, my son, thou art going up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion and as an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? So that lets you know that Judah is not only a leader, but Judah is the lion that's ready to jump on the prey. But the, but the system has pacified Judah because yeah. if, Judah, if Judah stay in a docile state, the other tribes will follow suit. So it behooved them to teach that Judah was someone else so that Judah don't rise up to their true identity and take their rightful place in the earth. So that's people... Right. People ask, why do we teach who, you know, who the Israelites are and why do we <laughs> identify Israel with color? Mm-hmm. Because on an elementary level, that's the easiest way to show people we are the people of the book. That's number one. Number two, by giving these people their heritage and their identity back, the spirit will come on Judah to rise and lead a people. 
precise. <laughs> so that, that's very important. That's very important. I wanted to put that out there. And just thank you for supporting the church and thank you for your um, your constant prayer, your constant prayer and inspiration yes, that you bring that you bring to this church. I wanted to thank you personally for that. Oh, brother, thank you so much. And if I may, can I can I give just one little quick testimony? Go ahead. Okay, and she is nine years old, and she was just eager to say something to Elder Ricard. So here she goes really quick. I'll make it quick. Okay. How are you doing? What is your name? Uh, Samantha. Your name is Ashley? No, Samantha. Oh, Samantha. Okay. You had a testimony. What is your testimony, Samantha? Uh, hired by your shire. And I want to encourage you, brother. Thank you for teaching us. What name did you say again? Yes. What was the name you said? You said Ahia. What? Yes. By Shem Yeshaya. <laughs> well, thank you. You keep calling on that name. That's the name that's going to deliver the children of Israel out of their captivity. And I'm glad, sister. You were able to receive you you were able to receive the information that we didn't have the opportunity to partake in as children. Thank you, and yes, I am that I am. A higher by Shemishai. A higher share. A higher means that I am that I am. <laughs> and your mother's doing a great job with you. Bless you. Yes. Okay, I, I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Okay, Shalom, brother. Bye. Shalom, sister. All right. I had to get her to say that she wanted to go ahead and say hello to you, so I, I promise her that, brother. Thank you, sister, and you're doing a great job with her. <laughs> <laughs> well, bless you, brother, and I'm praying for you, for, for you all. I love you all, and be blessed. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Boy, that was a blessing. That was such a blessing. I want to read this also, um, going into the African deception, okay? I'm at Matthew, the second chapter, in the 13th verse, and it says, And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there, until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Okay? And when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. So this is showing right here that Christ hid amongst the Egyptians for two years. And everyone knows the original Egyptians were black people. So that's one dark race hiding amongst another dark race, okay? So being dark-skinned doesn't make you African. They're hamnetic. We are shimnetic, okay? And we put this out there because we, we feel that this should get equal billing in the Christian church. If they can teach as part of their doctrine that the Negroes are suffering the curse of ham with no problem at all, if they can teach that, then we feel that the church should be equitable and give Deuteronomy 28 and 68 the same billing, the same promotion, which says the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Egypt is a Greek word that means bondage. By the way whereby I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies, for buying men and buying women, and no man shall buy you. That means no man shall save you. So if they can teach that we are from the seed of Ham with no problem, why can't they teach that we are the people in Deuteronomy 28 that suffer the curses according to the Bible? They, and, and they expect us to readily accept the people they put up as the Jews. But yet we're wrong or racist if we say we're the Jews. How backwards is that? 
So in order for us to come together and, and fight these doctrines that have destroyed our people, we must first figure out who we are. We must first come together. A lot of people say, well, why can't we come together? Because there's nothing we can come together under. That's why. Religion have divided us. Africanism and all these different philosophies that the nations have given us have divided us. The only thing that can gather Israel or Judah together is who they are. Christ said it himself that a nation divided against itself cannot stand. Hosea 4 and 6 says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, and because they have rejected knowledge, the Most High will also reject them. We are rejected people because we link to everyone except the God and the nation we were originally a part of. We reject the God that put us in this condition, and we reject the people that was cursed. Which, which are us. We reject ourselves. So again, if you don't know anything at all, I can see you linking into to Egyptology or what have you. But you have some brothers, man, who know they're not Egyptians, but are hold to it because Egypt is known for rich culture. Not knowing that it was Israelites in all these different societies that made these countries and these nations in Africa great. The most high told Abraham that all nations shall be blessed in thee. So every place Israel go, become a blessed nation. Israelites left Egypt. Egypt became a desert. So there's more I want to go into, but I'm going to open it up before I go into the rest of the scriptures because we have, we have a lot of people tonight. And I do want to make the, the announcement on the migration a little later. I hope you can hear me clear. You know, I'm, not, I'm, I'm away from my normal desk tonight, but I, I didn't want to postpone another show, okay? So let's see here. We have someone from the 316 area code. Let's see here. Uh, this is Ricard Shaw from the Gavin of Christ. How are you doing this evening? Uh, I'm doing fine. Okay, Hello? your name? Yes, oh, I'm my here. name is LaVon. Okay, talk to me. Uh, no, I was just calling and listening in. Um, I've been getting on this truth, I say, for about the last three, four months. Um, it's been amazing. I'm happy uh, finding out more about myself each and every day. I'm steady doing research. And, of course, I have to call in every Sunday to hear, you know, everything that you guys have to say. Okay, what's your name? My name is LaVon. LaVon? And what state yeah. are you from? Wichita, Kansas. Kansas, okay. And where did you hear 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 about the? Where, where do you hear the truth? Um, I've been hearing. I know you probably been speaking to her, to Tamara. Um, she's been, you know, get, she's been, you know, opening my eyes to, you know, everything that you guys have been doing and everything. And I've been doing my own research and, you know, been finding out more and more. So. So, so you know now that we are actually the children of Israel according to the Bible. Yes. And. Did you grow up in church? I've been wanting to. That's been my next step is, you know, but I'm re I'm trying to get myself more prepared, you know, so that I can be, you know, ready to handle, you know, every question and every, you know, remark and everything that they have to say. I want to be able to, you know, do it right, you know. So I've okay. been trying to hold off and humble myself even more so that I can go to the church. And, and, okay, and, I, I can hear you. You've got a lot of things going behind you. Uh, Okay. I'll tell you okay. what. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you what. You can get back on and listen because I, I, I have a lot of background noise. But yes. I'll yeah, make sure we take a note with your number, and I'll, okay. I'll talk to you again soon. All right. Thank you. All right. Bless you. You can get right back on, okay? All right. Hello. Well, that's good, brothers and sisters, are figuring this out. Let's see here. We have someone from the 313 area code. Uh, this is Ricard Shaw from the Gavin of Christ. How are you doing this evening? You got to cut the radio off in the back. Can you hear me? 
Okay, I'm going to ask you all, when, when I bring you in, make sure you're ready with us because I get too much feedback. I'm going to have to go to the next call. I apologize for hanging up on you. Uh, you have to call back and get on, get on the back end, okay? Uh, let's see here. We have someone from the 678 area code. Uh, this recalls you off in the Gavin of Christ. How are you doing this evening? Recall yourself from the gathering of Christ. How are you? Okay, we're going to keep moving this along. I apologize. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm going to just click that off and go to the next call. Okay, one moment, folks. Okay, we have someone else from Kansas. How are you doing this evening? Hello? Okay, I don't know if this is my phone or... Hello? I hear someone there. Hello? Okay, I'm going to try one more. If this one don't work, then I'm just going to uh, finish the lesson, and you can just jot it down from there. Hold on. Try one more here. Okay, this is Ricard Shaw from the Gathering of Christ. How are you doing this evening? Hello? Shalom, brother. Shalom, how are you doing this evening? So do you hear me clearly out there? Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Do you hear me loud and clear? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you, brother. Uh, I didn't know it was me that was on. You didn't say a number. But uh, this is Ramar. I talked to you last week. Are you hearing me clear through the radio is what I'm asking? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, talk to me. I'm on my where phone, you from, actually. Where, 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 you, where are you from, Lamar? I'm from Oklahoma, but I live in Dallas. Okay. Talk to me. Uh, just listening in. Um, you know, everything you're saying, I mean, you really can't. There's no argument for it. I mean, uh, me, myself, I'm well past uh, everything that you're saying as far as who we are and that we're not African. Uh, I think a lot of people, when you, when you tell them who they are, you know, it's like you get a silent response. It's like, how do they take it? It's, it's, it's finding out something that your whole life you've never known, and now it's like, this is who you are. It's like they, they, they go the other way. So that's the biggest problem with people right now. My, my issue I have with, with this is, what is it that Israelites that have been deprived of their origin and their true history for so long, what is it? about them being the children of Israel that turns them off, that makes them want to deny that fact. I'm just going to throw that out because maybe one of you can answer that. Why is it that they believe in the Bible, they respect the people of the Bible, they even respect Christ as an Israelite, but would reject themselves being the children of Israel? Well, um, my statement on that would be that I think they don't really – have any knowledge of the Bible. They really have an understanding of what some other man, their pastor, their religion has taught them. That's what they okay. So now it's like you've got to break these bad habits, all these sins that you've been told that you could do. Now you find out that when you read the Bible, Scripture speaks against that. So okay. you mean to tell me I, gotta, I can't go to church on Sundays? I've got to worship the Sabbath on Saturday? You know, it's like trying to break that. They can't go to church and I can't sing in the choir no more, and you know, uh, you know. So when you, when you when you get the truth, um, a lot of people just they run from it. Okay, well that that that's some good insight, and I thank you. And I want to pull that question and see see the other different answers I get because, I mean, because when I first found out that I was the person, old oh, people of the book, um, I mean, I didn't know what to do with myself. I was elated. I mean. For once, I was settled in my spirit, and I felt home. I felt the Bible was a history book 
that that filled in all the blanks that that were that that, that I couldn't get filled in 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 in, in regular church or in, in these these institutions we call school. So to me, it was a breath of fresh air. And it behoo it behooves me how brothers and sisters will deny themselves and and feel comfortable and go on like that. But brother, I'm going to put you on the back. I'd like to thank you, man, and that's, that was some good insight. But I'm going to open that up. Uh, you know, that's an open-end question, and hopefully some brothers and sisters can, because if we can talk about this, maybe we can come to some type of uh, new ways of fishing our people that are in darkness. But thank you, brother Lamar. All right, Shalom, and I'll be getting with Shabbat. I'm out here in Texas, and we're going to put that thing together for y'all, man. Please. Who are you getting with? Shabbat. He uh, sent me an email today. He responded to my email I sent to him, or sent to y'all. All right. Where, you mean, when did you, when did you contact him? Uh, the gathering as one at AO.com. Okay. You mean Shaquat? Shaquat? Okay. Brother Shaquat. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get with him about getting y'all down here, man, because like I said, we're trying to, you know, hook up with y'all for sure. Well, well, we got to get out in Texas, man. We've been talking about it. We just need the support to get there, and that, that's it. All, All right? We're going we gonna to make it happen for y'all. So uh, I'll get with him. I'll give him a call, and uh, much blessings and shalom, brother. All right, shalom. Thank you. I, I, I'm still waiting for someone to, to let us know which which family of Africans they come out of. Now, I see... There'd be some highly intelligent brothers in Egyptology now, and they go into all the richness of Egypt, and they they, they even be bringing some good understanding of history, of Amer- of African American history and things of that nature. That's that's good, but they'll they'll win and give all that credit to their knowledge in Egyptology. But yet, when you ask these same people, prove to me that you are Egyptian, they'll look at you like you had two heads, or like you're trying to offend them when really you're trying to show them that they're still falling under the same uh, spiritual bondage just under another people. We were under Egypt before. Why do you want to go back under the mindset of uh, the people of Egypt again? Uh, We have someone from the 315 area code. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, This is Rick Carshaw from the Gavin of Christ. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing great, brother. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Who is this? This is Brother Bruce. How you doing, Bruce? Long time no, no here, brother. Well, I've been in the classes, brother. Um, I haven't been on very able to get on a lot of these radio shows because it's just so packed, you know, everybody trying to get in. But um, I wanted to come with a scripture real quick. Go ahead. Okay, I'm at Matthew 10 and 34. Go ahead. Think not that I think not that I have come to send peace on earth, I am come not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. So um, I just just wanted to come on and tell the brothers and sisters that we are going through this fight with our families. And I wanted to give personal testimony because I saw the the, uh, the class on Yahweh and Jehovah. Now, okay. I have two sons. I have two sons. I, I spoke to you about this before. Two sons, two different mothers. My oldest son's mother is a Jehovah Witness, and my youngest son's mother is in the nation of Yahweh. So okay. right now, it's a fight for me as far as my sons getting them under the right, you know, getting them under Christ. And I just want to say that I'm praying for all the brothers and sisters out there to get their families to get understanding, and uh, we just need to pray for each other to fight this. That's what it is, man. Thank you, brother. That, and, and thank you for that encouragement. Yeah. Because that that's the toughest piece we we deal with here is is family, loving, knowing that we love them and we, we and and we don't want them to suffer the persecution coming. But uh, the reality is, unless they come to the realization and, and follow this Bible, they're going to get the short end of the stick. And, and I'm being light with that. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, it seems like um, you know once they, they you know once they get their mindset on these certain religions, it's like as soon as I bring up the name of Christ, they just they just look at me like, 
and they use that, you know, to keep me away from my son because they don't want my sons to come into the, the understanding that I got. They want to keep them under that captivity of whatever they're following. So I just want to let okay. everybody know you got to endure to the end and keep that fight up. Thank you, brother. And you stay strong. The Lord, the Lord have your son. Right. Okay, excuse me. All right, bless you, brother. Bless you. Okay. I'm going to read some more scriptures to show you Israelites sojourning amongst the other nations. Israelites sojourning amongst the other nations. Here's another example. Acts 7 and 9, it says, And the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt, but the Most High was with him. So Joseph, which is the father of the so-called Puerto Ricans or Ephraimites, he was sold to Egypt and became second to the king. Only in the throne was the king higher than, than Joseph. Okay? And in Egyptology, he's called Imhotep. That's Joseph. And through his dreams, he saved the earth by storing seven years plenteous before, before famine. And through those dreams, being that the Most High was with them, the whole earth was saved, and the children of Israel was, was able to sojourn in Egypt for 400, over 400 years. So these, this was one dark race or one dark family being afflicted by another dark family that can easily distinguish each other, even though they were all dark-skinned. One dark family living and ruling amongst another dark family. And it says here, I'm at the 10th verse, and delivered him into all afflictions, all of his afflictions, and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So the Most High was with Joseph. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. That's the New Testament, folks. And that's written of in Genesis also. That Joseph himself became governor of Egypt. Here it is. He's from the seed of Shem, ruling in a Hamitic land. The 11th, the 11th verse. Now there came a dirt over the land of Egypt and Canaan, that's South Africa, a great affliction. And our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. And the second time Joseph was made known to his brethren, and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh, then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him, and all his kindred, three score and fifty souls. Three score and fifteen souls, excuse me. So that's, so that's seventy-five souls. So Jacob went down into Egypt and died, and our fathers. So Israel sojourned amongst the Egyptians. So could it be, brethren, that instead of us holding on to Egyptology or to Africanism, that we are the people that sojourn amongst the Africans? Could it be that these are the same people that fulfilled the prophecy in Deuteronomy 28 and 68 when Christ told his followers, when you see the desolation, flee into Africa? Yes. The nations have conspired together, including the Africans, to keep this truth from you, that you are, in fact, the children of Israel, suffering the afflictions based on the sins of your forefathers, and now your sins are at the, excuse me, your curses are near an end, and you are about to be liberated. All the nations have had their opportunity to rule over Israel, and now the God of Israel is free in Israel to serve him in spirit and in truth. Okay? We have someone from the 816 area code. This is Rakash Shiar from the Gathering of Christ. How are you doing this evening? Shalom, brother. Shalom. Your name? My name is Chris from St. Louis. How you doing, brother? You want something? You have something to say, or you were just listening tonight? Just listening tonight. Okay. Let me ask you a question, Chris, before I go to the next call. All right. When did you first find out that you were, in fact, the people written of in the Bible? Uh, 
I can tell you, it was like, I'd say about a year and a half ago. A year and a half ago. And what did you believe before that? I was always brought up in church, you know. My, my grandfather was a preacher, so we all went to his church. Okay, that's good. When I got into the truth, you know what I'm saying, with all the holidays and things of that nature, and then tuning in to you on YouTube, you know what I'm saying, it just opened my eyes up a little more to where, you know, I got rid of a lot of things that, you know what I'm saying, wasn't pertaining to the, you know, the the word of God. Basically. Okay. So that's where I've been at for right now. Okay. So now there's a question I have for you, Chris. Why do you think that even though, you know, it's good to have some spiritual base growing up, there's nothing wrong with that. Why is it that you think that you wasn't taught this information in your church? Well, I, I look at it like, you know, I was brought up in a family church. So with the preacher being a part of my family, I guess, with what he was speaking, you know what I'm saying, he was trying to keep the family together. So to okay. let, us, let us know that we the true Israelite people instead of the Gentiles, you have nothing but confusion in your church. So, you know, when I got to the learning the truth or knowing who I really am, you know, it's not that I uh, I did stop going to church, you know, but I started learning the word for myself without the choir, without all that singing, you know what I'm saying? Us men, we go to the to, to church really to hear the word, you know, looking for an answer to all our problems. So when we get amongst brothers that, you know what I'm saying, just really in the word and not all that extra, you know what I'm saying, you just – you. The most I open up your eyes, if it's if it's things you didn't know, you find them out. You know what I'm saying? And, no, but uh, what, what, I'm, what I'm asking is, in particular, why is it you didn't you felt that you wasn't finding this information in your church that you grew up in? What in particular is what I'm asking you? Why why do you think this wasn't taught amongst your family in the church? No, well, I, I probably because they went to a Bible college. I, I really don't know. Okay, have you have you been able to sit and speak with your family since then? Since you've learned the truth that who the people are and what the true prophecies are con- concerning the Bible. I mean, it's been That's, difficult, believe me. You know, uh, when we first when we first got into the Word, me and my brother, we uh we used to talk to the family about you know, the most high and different things to that, telling them that we the true people. And, you know, it was a lot of confusion at first. But now that, you know, we don't we don't come so much with just hitting them so hard with it. We just, you know, open that word up and try to have some Bible classes. My sisters and brothers, you know, just get to them softly. You ain't got to just mark on them with it, you know what I'm saying? Just something they ain't, they ain't never been used to, you know. Uh, okay. Well, brother, you keep on you keep on striving, brother. And you keep on coming through, all right? Shalom. And uh, shalom. I know you're listening. I'm gonna put you on the back, and you continue to listen. We got about 25 minutes left, all right? All right. All right. Bless you. Okay, we have someone. We're gonna keep this thing rolling along. We have someone from the uh, let's see here, the 413 area code. I don't see Cody on the phone. He said he wanted to he's gonna be on here tonight. I'm going to bring him right through if I see him. Okay, this is Rikar Shiar from the uh, the Gavin of Christ Church. How are you doing this evening? Hello? Hello? Okay, I'm going to say hello one more time. And then after that, I'm going to the next call. Hello? All right. Bless you. Okay, let's see here. I'll get to the next call. Uh, this is Rikar Shiar from the Gathering of Christ. How are you doing this evening? Hello? Hello? Okay, I'm going to keep this thing moving. 
If I say hello and I don't hear anything, I'm going to the next call. Okay, next we have someone from the 901 area code. Okay. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Shalom, brother. Okay. okay, this is Rakesh from the Gavin of Christ. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing fine, brother. Okay, who's this? This is Lavelle calling from Tennessee. How you doing, Lavelle? Talk to me. I'm doing good, man. You have an excellent uh, topic tonight. Oh, praise the Father. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you want to chime in? Yeah, I'm going to chime in. I'm going to chime in. No, Mom. I'm calling. Okay, then, uh, about the African deception, the reason I know that they're not African-American, it's just so simple now in 2009 with all this information out here, plus waking up to your uh, videos and through a friend a year and a half ago. And once I okay. heard the truth, I just, I just knew it was the truth. You know what I mean? It's like I was happy. I, I wept. Okay. You know, I cried when I, when I found out, when I started reading the Bible more. And uh, mm. all this time, all this time we've been over here, we just been beat down with these uh, philosophies and theologies and stuff, and and, the, and captivity and the oppression that we just we 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 got the spirit in us, but we didn't have the information. And when the information comes, I deal with it with my family on the job everywhere. You know what I mean? It's like our people are really truly stiff necked. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I really see that now. We are some hard. That's why I know we are the people. Because when, when the truth comes, they fight it. They reject it. They don't call you no more. They don't speak to you on the job no more. So it's, 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 it's deep, man. But everybody you know what is going to get it. Huh? You know what it's like, brother? It's like once you get the truth, you realize that the world is a cult. That's it. The That's world it. is a, it, it's a cult movement. Right. And, and when you wake from this, this dream, and this spell they have on you, right. automatically everyone in the world that's plugged to the matrix becomes your enemy. Ooh, that's it, man. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's and, it. And, and, and they're, <laughs> it, exactly. They become your enemy, and they don't even know why. You're trying to liberate and help them and unplug them. And see, there's key things that they have, they have programmed in this from a child that right. if you – if you immediately deny any of these certain points that they have programmed in you, automatically a red flag go up and they become your enemy. That's it. Holidays, holidays is one of the, the biggest indicators that they use to know when people are breaking away. That's the first thing. They see you stop celebrating and dealing with the world, a red flag goes up and you're in, you're in conversations you don't know about. That's true. Um, that's the biggest indicator. When you start pulling away from the philosophies and breaking the spell, that lets you know that these holidays, there's a spell that comes with these holidays. Oh, once you break, right. yes, once you break away from those holidays, that's the greatest indicator because I don't care if you're a Muslim, Christian, or what you are, you're celebrating these holidays out here. That's true. You're celebrating some of them. And even if, you, even, even if you're not in the religion, you partake in some way in it, be it go over somebody's house and deal with the food. Somehow you, you're plugged into this matrix. So I just want to put that out there, but go ahead. Okay, yeah, if you tell them, if you tell them about the, the swine and not to eat the chillings no more, see, once you get this truth, you start wanting to follow those commandments, man. You, you want to. Once you wake yeah. up, so you got to get the information first. See, a lot, And then when I got it, I was overjoyed. Like I said, I cried. I'm a, I, I mean, it's it's. The Most High, He has to do. He has to put His holy ruach on you for you to. It's not something that we can do. You know what I mean? That's so true. if people that's not getting it, He's not dealing with them right now. Maybe He will sooner or later when this stuff really go down. But uh, yeah. like I said, right right now, right now, man, it's like I know that it's the truth because everybody I, I come to with it, they're, they're rejecting it. Everybody. I got one friend I talk to on the phone, and we don't. Me and his wife, we talk. We talk a lot on it. We're on that level. But everybody else. They don't call no more. My phone don't even ring no more, man. Since I left the holidays and all that, all the pagan stuff, and let that go to the swine. And brother, brother, it, brother, brother, it's like this. Noah prophesied for 120 years. Only eight people got on the boat. So <laughs> that's just what it is, brother. Welcome to the truth. That's it. And and go ahead. One more quick thing, and I know we're not African because African American. It's, it's two continents. I know that. 
and they reduce us now to colors and, 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 and nicknames and all that kind of stuff. And Africans, they come in our communities down here and down south selling chitlins and swine and beer and everything, and, 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 they, and they talk their little language. I, they, don't, they don't show no love for the, the Negro man down here, man. They mock us, ridicule us. They, they, I work with them. You know what I mean? They, 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 I don't feel a brother, brotherly spirit. You know what I mean? Okay. So I, know, I know we're not African. And then when we came over here off the ship, when Mandela got out, he didn't he didn't do nothing to help us. Did nobody help us when we was over here? You That's I mean? true, but and we only got a few minutes left, so I gotta I gotta okay, keep okay, on okay, going, okay. brother. But you're okay, right. Okay, okay, brother. And, and you made some great points, brother. Thank you, brother. All right, bless you. Bless you. Shalom. Shalom. The brother was right on, man. Psalms 83 tell you all the nations have come together and said, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel be no more in remembrance. We only have about 12 minutes, so keep it short and tedious. Hit your point, and we go into the next call, and then I have to make an announcement. Uh, this is Ricard Shaw from the Gathering of Christ. How are you doing this evening? Ricard Shaw from the Gathering of Christ. How are you? Okay, we're going straight to the next call. Uh, someone from the 314 area code. Get yourself prepared because we're going right through. We're running right through. Uh, this, is, this is Ricard Shaw from the Gathering of Christ. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing all right, brother. This is Brother Corey from St. Louis. How are you doing, Corey? I'm doing pretty good. Just got a quick scripture over here in uh, Genesis, something you were just speaking on. Genesis. Okay, let make it 30 seconds. Hit it. And he said unto Abraham, no uncertainty that the seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them for 400 years. Exactly, and that was fulfilled when we, was, when we walked into Egypt and stayed there and was afflicted by the Egyptians. And we've been here in America almost 400 years, and our slavery is almost at an end. We're going to walk up out of here. Bless you, brother. Chapter and verse, what chapter and verse is that so that, so that the listeners, listeners can get that? Genesis 15, verse 13. Bless you, brother Corey. You keep that fight up, brother. Hi, right, you too, brother. Shalom. Shalom. Bless you. Okay, we're going to keep this rolling. we got a few minutes here. Okay, we have someone from the 703 area code. Uh, we have a... Shalom, how are you this evening? Doing good, bro. It's Keith and Marilyn, man. Talk to me, Keith. It's a good topic. I was watching something on the news the other day, and um, one of our congresswomen, uh, they were interviewing her. Apparently, they, they had misappropriated $14 million and they found it. Like, wow, we found this money. And I noticed in the background that she had, like, all of these African statues and, you know, how they got the fertility and all this other stuff. And I say to my wife, you know, I can't believe that she got all these statues and stuff going on in the background, and this is part of this African deception. And she, my wife says to me, well, don't you think some people just want it because they think it's pretty? I was like, you know, no, not really, because it, 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 I know she's not worshiping it like it's idolatry, but it still has a spirit behind it, this, this hermetic African connection that they try to make, and I think that, a lot of our leaders fall into this whole we're Africans thing. So it's definitely well, a deception, bro. Well, I'll tell you this, because there's a lot of idolatry goes into what they would call uh, relic collection. Relic, relic. collection. Yes. And it's straight idolatry. Everyone knows that the Hermetic people deal with uh, this this, this amonism where they worship the creatures and feel like there's other gods they must follow and deities they must worship before they get to the ultimate God. It's called animism in Africa. So our people, and believe it or not, some of our higher-ups know that they are dealing with certain deities and spirits. They know the history behind some of these relics that, that, that we look at as just something for our African culture. If you've got an African mask in your house or some type of craziness, some madness sitting on your wall, you need to throw that stuff out immediately. Those things channel spirits and nothing but idols, and they're used in witchcraft. So I'm, I'm glad you brought that, brother. I've got about eight minutes, brother, so I'm going to bring a few more people in, then I have to make an announcement, okay? Keep up the bless fight, you. bro. I see you, man. All right, bless you, brother. Shalom.
Okay, Brother Cody. Shalom. I didn't forget you tonight. Talk to me. We got about a couple of seconds. Come on. I just wanted to say, man, uh, uh, as far as uh, uh, Israel waking up, the most I say he was going to have to put the spirit into the earth to, to, to revive the children of Israel. They would not do it on their own. Point blank. That's right. Is that. They're not going to do it on their own. But the ones who need to hear and who who who, who open to, to, to follow the most high and to follow Christ, they're going where they need to go. That's all I wanted to say, bro. Well, bless you, brother. And, uh, it was good seeing you tonight, brother, and I'm, I'm going to yeah, see you too. tomorrow. Okay, for sure. All right, bless all right. you. Shalom. The scriptures also say that that the teachers shall not be scattered in corners anymore, but your eyes shall see your teachers. See, these preachers are scattered in corners. The Most High say that no longer will your teachers be scattered in corners anymore, but your eyes shall see your teachers. And that's what's going on now. The Most High have put out a, have a new venue in the earth where you don't have to get the same information week in and week out from the same church. Now the Most High is putting the spirit on prophets and teachers that's going to go out in the highways and gaps like the Lord commanded and, and spiritually liberate the people in these, these conclaves you call churches, okay? And that's what's going on right now. Your eyes are seeing your teachers, okay? And these teachers cannot be bought. These teachers are not restricted to a theology or ideology or religion. These teachers are the teachers of the Most High, and they're everywhere. They're everywhere. The Most High have men all over the earth that speak different languages that are walking with this same spirit, working the, wake, waking the children of Israel all over the earth. It says right here, and I'm in Isaiah 30 and 20, and so the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. So you're not going to see your teachers in these these corner churches. They're not the teachers of the Most High. They're the teachers that were set up from theologian seminary colleges, set up by the Roman Catholic Church to continue the lie and deception and the captivity of a people. But Christ says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We have someone from the 316 area code. How are you doing this evening? Come on. You, you gotta, how are you doing, sister? Talk to me. We already just spoke earlier. Oh, but I pulled you in again, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I must I must be rolling them today like nothing. Well, let me let me grab a few more people, sister, and thank you for holding. Uh huh. <clears throat> okay, let's go down here to the seven one eight area code. I think there's someone in New York. How are you doing? This is Ricard Sharp with Gavin of Christ. How are you this evening? Hello, I'm blessed. How are you? I'm doing good. Your name? My name is Gina, yes, and I'm in Manhattan. Talk to me, Sister Gina. Oh, well, actually, I was just calling to listen. Um, it's just, uh, I think I've been coming into the knowledge since last month. And okay. And it's truly been a blessing to me. I will say this, I've always, as I guess being Negro, <laughs> I've always known that uh, I was Hebrew, I was Israel, but i like to thank Ahaya for you and giving the spirit of seeking and finding out the truth as far as having detail about it. Because I grew up in a church where we knew that much, but we never had the detail of the tribe. Okay. And actually where we came from. So it's just truly been a blessing for me. So thank you, brother. Praise the Father. What is your name again? Gina. Gina. Okay. Well, we're coming to New York soon, so we're hoping to sit down with you and your family while we're out. Okay, well, well, thank you very much. I actually, um, <laughs> it's amazing. The brother out of Detroit, I'm from Detroit. Yes. Um, <clears throat> brother Dean Parker out of Detroit actually yes. has a, a video clipping on YouTube. So it's just been amazing. I highly suggest awesome. So, yeah. Definitely. Well, bless you, sister. So I'll be looking for you when you come to New York. Okay. Well, bless you, sister. All right. Bless you, too. Shalom. All right. Shalom. And let me say this also, all right? We're not saying that other nations cannot receive this information and follow the God of Israel, all right? We're not saying that. What we're saying is 
we must distinguish ourselves based on the position that we must uphold in this earth in the last days. We must do that. We must take on our rightful place in this earth. And in order to do that, we must take hold to our rich history, our rich culture, our Bible, and follow that Holy Spirit so that we can be a light to the Africans, a light to the, uh, the, the Caucasians, so that we can be a light to the Asians, not so that we can separate ourselves, but to bring everyone under one understanding in the fullness and understanding of Christ in spirit and in truth. That's the point. Right now, all these nations I'm speaking of right now are divided because there's no teachers in Christ that are set up in the earth that can bring it all together in the spirit of Christ. So the spirit of Christ is not gathering the people. That's why the people are divided. So this is... this. In identifying Israel, that's beneficial to the other nations so that we can be a light to them and bring them into the true understanding according to the Most High, the true God, so they can put down Buddha, Allah, Africanism, and any other philosophy that have been destroying our people. Now, before, before we go, I'd like to say that we thank you for your pledges. We're looking for pledges from, from all the brothers and sisters so that we can get the brothers out of here, the brothers and sisters, the brothers that are ch touching down very soon. We're looking for a $50 pledge per person. If you are a family, we're looking for a $200 pledge, especially those that have submitted applications. We need those pledges because that money will go towards uh, uh, helping those brothers that will do the original migration, that will stake ground so that you will have a safe place once it's time for you to leave. So you can make your pledges to gathering as one at AOL.com. Gathering as one at AOL.com. Again, that's gathering as one at AOL.com. Make your pledges so you can help us. Please, we need your pledges so that we can get, get some people up out of here immediately. With that, I'm Elder Rick Hoshia. I'll see you next Sunday. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free.